on this episode of Cursed. Before moving into this house, I didn't believe in curses. But I do now. And it felt like needles were just poking me all over my face. That's when horses just enter me. Blood was just spreading everywhere. I didn't think that things would get worse, but it did. Like something evil was there. His basement had the smell of copper, the smell of blood. That's the copper smell. It had pentagrams in the walls. In the center, there was a surgical table full of blood. It appears they did sacrifices. My name is David Marsh, and over the last 30 years, I've seen people affected by curses in very real, yet unbelievable ways. Those afflicted by a curse quickly become sick with fear and misery as they fall deeper and deeper into a dark and tormented existence, and eventually it can lead them to their untimely death. This is Cursed. Throughout the world, there are places that are believed to be cursed. In Egypt, the pharaoh's tombs and the pyramids themselves are said to curse those who enter. In Japan, the Sea of Trees is a forest said to be so cursed that those who enter commit suicide. And the Manchac Swamp in Louisiana was cursed by a witch who wanted revenge for the atrocities suffered by her kind. Now, numerous bodies are found there regularly, the apparent victims of ritualistic killings. But not all cursed locations are exotic or mysterious. And not all cursed places need to have an ancient history attached to them in order to wreak havoc on those who enter. For some, a cursed location is the very one that they live in. Curses can attach themselves to homes and locations as easily as they can to objects. Sometimes, it can be a tragic and sudden death or murder that causes a location to hold a power over those who enter. Other times, it can be the focused and intended will of an individual that brings on the curse. But sometimes, there is no clear indication how or why a home has become cursed in the first place.
months down the road, my whole family was starting to feel a whole lot of negative things in this house. Everybody was just starting to just act really strange toward one another. A lot of arguing. It wasn't normal for us. We were a very close-knit, big family. It was just like a bad ball of energy in that house. The house was just spooky, especially at nighttime. All of a sudden, I didn't like the house. It was a lot of bad energy in that house. I kind of sensed that from day one. When I call walk down the hallways, I would feel bad energy. I felt like it was this presence of, of people there. We all would hear footsteps in the attic. It was just really getting out of control. My family started to believe that this house was cursed. The house is haunted in some cases because of the atrocities that took place there many years ago. There are situations that it's out of their control because they simply moved to a house that somebody could have killed himself there 100 years ago. So they have simply no control over that. Things start to escalate when we start seeing strange things around the house moving. Things would just flip over off my mother's stand. Car keys. My mom, her car keys always come up missing. Nighttime, the TV would flip on and off. In the kitchen, I would hear dishes rattling. And one time, I heard the doggone microwave going on, on and off. I went in the room. And it was unplugged. was just creepy to begin with. <laughs> At times, in the living room, I felt like it was this presence of, of people there. <sighs> Fading in and out. They felt really scary to me. And I was really scared to sleep in the living room. It was just a horrible time for me and my family. Once I started feeling hands 
touching me. And I felt something touching my left hand. And it continued all night. I didn't think that things would, would get worse, but it did. One time, my stepfather was walking down the stairs. Coming up. I felt the energy around me. That's when I see two spirits appeared over my baby. It was like dark shadows. I said, could this girl be possessed? And later. In the center, there was a, like a surgical table full of blood. It appears they did human or animal sacrifices. A family's home is supposed to be a place of warmth and comfort, where children are safe from the dangers of the outside world. For some, moving into the wrong house can open a door that releases a curse so terrible that its painful effects are unleashed onto an unsuspecting family. One time, my stepfather was walking on the stairs. picture fell off the wall. And cut his hand really bad. <laughs> Tore the ligaments out of his thumb. Blood was just squirting everywhere. To where the ambulance had to come. Just a whole lot of stuff was going on there. Once again, I went home and I put my baby to sleep. And then I laid down for a little bit. I'll say about two minutes after I lay down, I went into some type of trance. And I felt the energy around me. That's when I seen two spirits appear over my baby. It was like dark shadows. That's when I heard them talking to me. I was just scared because I never really experienced exactly that. My cousin told me to go into the bathroom and wave the Bible over my head seven times. She told my sister to open up any chapter in the Bible and start reading it. I opened up the Bible and I started reading it. In my distress, I cried to the Lord and he heard me. I started feeling forces around me.
start having cold chills in my face. And it felt like needles were just poking me all over my face. That's when the forces just entered me and I felt them just jumping in. As I walked out the door, it felt like something was walking for me. Like I was a zombie or something. She comes down the hallway. She said that she was going into another zone or place. When my relative told my sister to wave the Bible over her head seven times, he caused her to open up whatever was going on in the house. I believe that house had that energy that was already there. And I believe my sister wasn't strong enough, so it entered her. There are spirits that are territorial, and there are spirits assigned to people. Demons are disembodied spirits, and they're always looking for a human body to dwell in, in order for them to carry on their project. Me and my brother, we were out shopping. And my mother kept calling the phone saying something's wrong with Sharonda. My mom was very hysterical. The closer we got, I started feeling like a real, a horrible feeling. My sister, Charlene, was starting to feel something, too. It was like something was trying to stop us from getting there. I started praying. We made it to the house. When I walked to the front door of the house, I remember twisting on the door and I, and it was burning. So I walked in from the back door. When I finally walked in the house, I started feeling like negative vibes, like this evil vibes. The feeling was just horrible. So I get there and... Coming up. All of a sudden, everything stops. If my uncle would never showed up, I felt like I would have been lost forever. I felt it just come out of my body. And later, it shot him in the head and cut him to pieces. When I finally walked in the house, I started feeling like negative vibes, like this evil vibes. The feeling was just horrible. So I get there. She's pale in the face and around her eyes, red. She was fighting it with all her might. 
Did she just start making crazy noise? So I said I would call my uncle. He's a preacher. He came over immediately. Yes, sir. They started performing the exorcist on my sister. She was jumping up and down. She was screaming, yelling. And then her eyes just went wide open and she wouldn't blink at all. Evil spirits come to steal, kill, and destroy. We are in warfare against an unseen world. In order for a curse to be broken, those spirits have to be cast out. Once the witchcraft is broken and the doors are shut to the devils, then the demons have nothing to hang on to anymore. They have to leave. I never seen nothing like it before. She wasn't her anymore. It felt like I was just trapped inside of my own body. I was in a dark place. I never felt nothing like this before. That was the scariest moment of my life, and I'm sure it was for my family, too. My uncle had holy water sprinkling on her. He said, this is my niece right here. I love my niece. You have to go. You have to leave. We defeated you 2,000 years ago. My uncle was going at him nonstop. That's when the noises started to come out of me. You heard this demon just whining and whining. He was speaking back in another tone of voice, too, um, speaking in code or another language. I never thought that I would hear my sister like that. forever. I did think that it was gone, but the next day, it was back the same way. The curse from the house stayed with me. After my uncle started reading the Bible to me, I thought that the next day would be better, but it really wasn't because the house, most of the time around 3 o'clock a.m., that's when it tries to attack me. And that's when I just feel the forces just surrounding my body. Then I have to pray. That's the only thing that stops it. I never thought anything would happen like this to anyone. I thought it only happened in the movies until I actually experienced it myself living in that house. I pray that it go away. Before 
I moved in the house, I didn't believe in curses. I just believed that evil existed, but I didn't believe in curses. I have heard stories, the previous people who rented from the owner, you know, a lot of bad things did go on in the house. But I was never able to verify what took place at this house. And where the curse came from. I never felt nothing like that since I left that house. Nothing like that. Don't compare to nothing I ever felt in my life. It's just, it's that house. For a family left to wonder why they had been victimized and left with the scars of a curse, life only gets harder and harder. Try as they may to escape from it, they may never truly know if they will evade their curse by simply leaving their home and moving somewhere else. There are those, however, who find themselves willingly in the midst of a cursed location. For those who investigate the unknown, the risk of encountering a curse is all part of the job. When others are in need and reach out to you for help, answering that call could lead you straight into a very dangerous situation. My name is William. I'm from Los Angeles. And I investigate cursed locations. I've surrounded myself with mediums and psychics. We'll go to locations and investigate the paranormal. In 2008, I got a call from a theater manager about a cursed theater at an army base. There's a lot of weird stuff happens there. We hear people walking, we hear whisperings. He told me about a gentleman that used to be an actor in the theater killed another gentleman. You're from the city? Uh, no, no, I'm from the city. I'm from the people and actually. What's going on with that? Shot mine, okay? No, 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 she is mine. You cannot have her, she is mine. What are you going to do about it? You're not going to do anything about it. You're not going to do anything. You know what? Don't push me. Don't, don't push me. I don't want to mess with you. You want to mess with you? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? He shot him in the head and cut him to pieces. And hid the body parts in the basement of the theater for a couple of days. The fact that a negative, heinous act happened, that leaves residual negative energy there that stays for generations. This person got killed before his time and suffered a very violent death. That can bring a curse in a location. And now that place is haunted because of a curse, because of crimes that took place there many years ago. The theater is still active. They perform different plays and they have acting lessons in the theater as well. This entity became very infatuated with one of the actresses. I understand there are many of us I swear, I'm not going to Okay, but you freaked out. Oh, I don't know why I 
I took interest in doing the investigation, and this occurs in a location. So I went in, walked around the theater, went to this basement. This basement had the smell of copper. And the smell of blood, that's the coppery smell. When I got down to the basement, something evil was there. Coming up. A lot of times, a, an entity will try and bring you physical harm. And later. When a violent act of murder results in the sudden and tragic loss of life, the negative impressions left by those who have died can cause a location to experience an array of frightening activity. And while the activity may seem harmless at first, it has the potential to turn violent. When I got down to the basement, something evil was there. This basement had the smell of copper. And the smell of blood that's the coppery smell. I noticed that it had uh, pentagrams in the walls. In the center, there was a surgical table full of blood. It appears they did sacrifices. It's a very eerie feeling. I was feeling like something evil was there. So I got out of the basement. When you do rituals, uh, sacrifices, you're calling on the energies. So the energy stays behind, encrusted in the walls, in the ground, and if this negative energy will stay there. So I've met with the theater manager. He saw this female ghost coming at him. A lot of times, a, an entity will try and bring you physical harm. So that prompted us to go back and find out why this female ghost was there. I've told the theater manager, let's sit here in the theater in the dark. And somehow I just 
felt this energy. I can describe it as like trying to walk in a swimming pool, this heaviness. And then we see this female ghost walk across the stage. Like to make a point A, hey, I'm here, you want to see me? So yeah, I, I saw a female ghost go back and forth. It's a residual curse. It's something that will happen over and over again. Coming up. are all around us. Every day, people are hurt and even killed at the hands of a curse. Curses can come in many forms and arrive in many different ways. We have to come back and give her a hell she needs. Once a curse has found its way inside the location, it can seem nearly impossible to get out. So we went back I enlist the help of people that are gifted. So this time I brought in a medium. Yeah. To make contact with the ghost that had taken over the theater. was able to communicate with this female ghost. Her name was Julie. She was a nurse. Well, why is she trapped? She's trapped by two dark entities. Julie did not live in the military base, but she lived in the surrounding areas and her husband had been assigned at the base in the 1940s. Of course, well, he never came back during the Second World War, so she was still waiting for him to come back. So she was waiting and waiting. Keep in mind, a lot of times, when someone dies, they don't realize they are dead, and they still think they are living in their time era. So our medium had to make contact with lost spirits that they had to be told very nicely, well, you are no longer here in body. Your spirit is here. Bill. I felt oppressed. I felt like a pain in my chest. Like someone was, was, was squeezing me like tight and 
I had to catch my breath. There are situations where people bring curses upon them. Demons are always looking for open doors to come in and torment someone. Let's get out of here. And so we, we left, we got out of the theater. So you have to know your limits. Never try to outdo yourself. Always listen to your sixth sense. If something tells you to get out of there, you get out of there. Never try to be the paranormal John Wayne. Know when to quit. So this is an ongoing investigation. We're still doing it now. Suffering through a cursed home or workplace is a difficult and tormenting experience. For some, it may mean finding another place to work, or it may mean finding a better way to protect yourself from something that is out to get you. For those who live in a cursed home, life is much more difficult and at times unbearable. And those infected by a curse are destined to live out their lives in pain and misery.